see. Amazing. Okay, welcome everyone to the second part of my and Angela's Activate Space. Uh, welcome to How to Deliver a Bomb Ass Session. So I'm Camilla, your MCVP OGB, and, and my co-factor. <laughs> I'm Angela, your MCVP Marketing. And Amazing. So. <laughs> 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 okay, thank you. So, um, yeah, so we're going to talk a little bit about the agenda for today's uh, for today's session. So, like I said yesterday uh, on our space, we were talking more about like content. We were talking about creating outlines and just making a session that really makes sense. Uh, today, we're going to talk about slide design. We're going to talk about you as a speaker, as a facilitator, and then we're going to give you our facilitation pro tips. Uh, that was a lot of fun for us to make. We basically took everything that we've learned in the last year and put it onto like four slides. <laughs> um, and then after that, we're going to have a little activity, of course, and then we will have a closing. So when Angela and I were thinking about, you know, what makes sense to start off this session, we were thinking that, you know, attending a session is really like going on a date. So first, is it really worth going to? <laughs> So content is so important. Again, uh, I linked here the session from yesterday so you can so you can see how we talked about, you know, going through content. Like, is it really worth it to go on that, get, on that date? I don't know. Depends on the content. <laughs> Next, is the movie going to be good? Say you're going on this cute little movie date like this uh, popcorn and soda. No one wants to sit through a terrible movie. We are here for the aesthetically pleasing vibes only. <laughs> um, and like, if it's ugly, we don't want it. Next is the person interesting. Think about the person you're going on a date with. You don't really want to go uh, on a date with someone who's just going to be super boring, like talk at you for an hour or two straight. It's, it's much better for both parties if they're engaging with you. And then finally, will I have fun? The question. It's super important to remember that, you know, when you're attending a session or when you're going on a date, it's important to have fun. Exactly. So we're going to start off with the most important part. I mean, a good part about it is the movie, what you're going to go see, because whether it's a date or not, you're also there for that content and that content needs to look good. So the why of that is that people are not just learning about things auditory, they like need to see things as well. It needs to be a balance between like the visual aspects and what they're hearing and the engagement. So we want to really highlight how slide design can help somebody interpret the session and also like whether they retain the information or not. So we have a few tips here. So the first is that you want to have a cohesive look. So we suggest using a template. You can probably already see that we all like this slide deck here has a similar cohesive look. She's got that orange and pink like gradient. Yes. Okay. Cohesive. That's what we're looking for. So that way it's obvious that every slide is a part of the same session. Next, the tip is use specific slide layouts for sections, like to visually break up your information. So think about how whenever we start a new section, there's a certain slide or whenever we have a beginning or an agenda or whenever you're showing a certain vocab word, you use a different slide. This can help them like subconsciously and visually remember those aspects or help them stay engaged with your session. The next tip is also pick a color theme. This is so important. You don't want this to be too harsh in their eyes. If I made this session bright red for you to look at this whole time or bright yellow screaming at your eyes, it can be really hard for people to pay attention. So you want to make sure you have a really good design here. And Camilla, her gracious self, attached a color scheme generator because she can't do that herself. So <laughs> here it is for you. If you want one, it's really nice to use something like this. Um, and then tip four is we <laughs> use one to two fonts you'll find throughout this presentation. We only use two fonts throughout it, but we also use typography, like things like bolding or changing the color or it italicizing to help emphasize what we're doing <laughs> here as well. And then the very last tip, um, and this one's not as like visually in terms of colors and design, but it's don't put too much on one slide because whenever that happens and it's like super crowded, people don't really pay attention to what you're saying. They rather read what is on the slide. So it's super important to make sure you like break it up. It's fine to have some extra slides. Don't put way too much on one slide. And throughout this one, we really wanted to format this as people who like don't attend, they can also understand this information. So you'll see there's a balance between keeping the slide simple, but also adding some extra info. Cool. Okay, so next we're gonna talk about you as a speaker, as a facilitator. And why? Because 
when you're up in front of an audience, you know, they're going to be looking at you. They're going to be listening to what you say. They're going to be seeing how you move and all these different parts. They're all going to influence, you know, what the delegate sees and also how they retain a lot of the information. So first we're going to talk about how you speak. So there are really three main parts here, tone, speed, and volume. So if you talk in a monotone voice like this for the entire time, like people could very well fall asleep. You want to be able to move your voice around. Second is speed. If you're talking really, 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 really fast and no one can understand what you're saying, then that's not going to be fun for anyone either. <laughs> and then volume. If I'm whispering, either. So that's why <laughs> these three parts are super, super important. All of them will play a role in, you know, how your delegates are um, kind of understanding and, and engaging with what you're saying. Next is how you look. So, you know, we talked about going on the date with that person. You're going to make judgments about what they wear to your date. So with your clothes, like match the attire of the event. If it's a casual event, be casual. We matched work at home today for you guys. We didn't show up in like, well, I was about to say suit and tie, but that's not us. Um, <laughs> but yes, like match. <laughs> yeah, match the event because what you wear influences their opinion of you and your credibility. The next is also posture because you want to think about like you don't want to be just like sitting on the floor. If I was laying in bed during this You're session, like <laughs> y'all would be judging me, right? <laughs> like you want to make sure that you are presenting yourself as confident and that you care about this information just as much as you want them to care about it. Cool. And then the last part is is how you present. So first of all, eye contact. We talk about this a lot. Uh, you want to be moving your eyes around, making eye contact with different people. That's a great way to engage them also. I don't mean like pick one person and like stare them down intensely for like the entire hour or something. Um, but it's a good way to engage different people. You know, you're looking around, you're making eye contact. It's fantastic. And then the second part is movement. That's something that is a really big distinguishing factor between someone who's just a presenter, you know, standing behind a podium um, and someone who's actually a facilitator. Right. As you probably have noticed, we like to talk a lot with our hands. And when we're fasting at conferences, we're also like pacing around. Right. We're walking to different sides of the room. We're using our hands. We're drawing people in and we're using eye contact. Uh, and these are kind of the tools we use in making our presentation really engaging for the people that we're talking to. Okay, people, this is what you came for, the real facilitating. Everything we just told you, you probably heard in school before, or it's like not that much of new information. It's just like validating what you already heard. But it's time to be a big kid. This, it was a protege before. This is the master class. So I really need you to like, you know, sit back up in your chairs, good posture like us, because this is the important part, okay? So <laughs> facilitating. The why here is that you are not a presenter, right? There are delegates that you engage with and you need to hold their attention. So like facilitating versus presenting. Presenting is just like, I did my report, I'm telling my boss about it. But, or like a class presentation. But facilitating is taking a group of people and having them all work together and like get something out of this session. So we're gonna go over a few topics here because this is so much. Like facilitating is the real meat of this, okay? First, we're gonna talk about preparation. Then we're going to talk about participation and managing activities. Those are some really heavy things. And then the best, the save the best for last, the firefighting session. We're going to talk about how the crazy things that we've dealt with, we're going to expose ourselves because there have been some truths. You all actually attended these sessions. Like, I know you were there. <laughs> um, so we're just going to expose what really happened behind the scenes and how to overcome them. That's what's like the masterclass of this for you guys. So Camilla, take it away. Alrighty. So first thing, preparation. Truly, I know, I, I don't know if it's the same for you guys, but you know, I literally remember my mom once being like, you know, preparation is key in anything you do in life. She talked about like a group project like that or something, but honestly, it's really true, right? If you just uh, throw some words onto a slide, like never look at it, and then you have to go and present it three weeks later, you don't know what's on your slides, you don't remember like the timing for it, you don't know anything that's going on, and that is already setting yourself up for failure because you don't even know you don't even have a plan of what you were going to do and what you want to achieve. So we're going to talk about preparation in two parts. First is the slides, the presentation itself. And the second part is the room, the, you know, uh, like we're talking about the full experience here for, for your delegates, for the audience. So for the slides, first thing, like I said, double check your presentation, go through it, check the animations and make sure you know what the order of your slides is to begin with. I know this has happened to me before where I'll like click and I think in my mind, I'm like, okay, I know what's next but I actually forgot an entire section and I kind of stumble. I like make myself stumble over my own words. 
Second part is dry running. Dry running is super, super crucial. We do this. We, we literally have days of pre-meeting before every single conference just to dry run. Dry run is basically just practicing with someone. Like before Angela and I did this, we literally sat down for 10 minutes and we just walked through it so that we could remind ourselves the order and what we wanted to say. It's also a great opportunity to get feedback from whoever it is you're dry running with. And then third is if you have a co fassy make sure you know who is presenting what. Like if you have cues or anything, Angela, I'm going to expose this right now. No. Angela and I are on FaceTime. <laughs> I got I to gotta tell them. Angela and I are on FaceTime right now so that we can also see, see each other and have cues. So, you know, I just, I didn't even mean to. I'm sorry, Angela. I had to. <laughs> they need to know. Right? These are real things that you want to do and it really helps you. So the second part of preparing, now you have your presentation, your like, your co fast, you're ready to go. Next is the room. So first of all, check the tech. We're going to be talking a lot about tech. That's like my, my, my all my horror stories are about tech. Uh, but you want to make sure that, you know, super simple things maybe you don't think about. Make sure your computer is charged and make sure you've turned off computer notifications for any messaging apps. It's super, super distracting, both like for yourself and for the delegates if you have notifications popping up. And, you know, you don't want people knowing your business like that. <laughs> Second is preparing the space. So, you know, if you need chairs or people are going to be getting up again, you want to make sure that your space is ready for whatever kind of session or activities you're going to have. And then third, lighting. Uh, you know, sometimes we have like living library, different sessions, like with di different sessions with different moods require different lighting. So you want to make sure that your space is completely ready for the delegate experience. Exactly, guys. Preparation is truly the key. And next up is participation. And we kind of like thought about how do I get the audience to interact with me? And there's so many times when like we struggle with this aspect. So we really picked out like three occasions that happen really often for us um, and that you've probably experienced, which kind of give you like our pro tip of like how to overcome these things. So the first is when you ask a question and everyone is silent. Anyone want to talk about this real quick? My God, look, it happens all the damn time, right? <laughs> and the truth is, is that what we need to do here in this is that don't speak. Literally, just wait. Like, truly, in that example, I didn't want to wait because y'all are just about to be taken forever. But literally, just wait. Because someone's going to crack under that, like, awkward pressure. And nobody's just going to no, let this be didn't. silent for 30 minutes. Sometimes you're going to have to wait a whole minute. Be quiet but it'll happen. And you guys are probably already noticing this. You're thinking about to all those sessions at WNC and S and C. And we're all just like, we're waiting with our hands behind our back. We're like, where's the session in the file? Are you doing it? And then somebody finally talks and it's always something like that. And a lot of times this helps the shy people like have enough time to get their confidence together and stand up and speak. The next is when people are not paying attention or talking. We're going to go into this one a little bit more <laughs> later in firefighting, but basically call them out if it's during an activity. Pull the attention back to you. Like you can go up and tap someone on the shoulder or you can just be like, hey, come on, this is disruptive. Come back to me. It's fine. You know, it's probably the last time you're going to do a session for them anyway. Don't worry about their opinions. <laughs> if they hate you, it's fine. <laughs> um, and also if it's happening while you're talking, you can like stand near them um, or look right at them because a lot of times people think they're like invisible in the crowd when they're not. And the last is when no one volunteers. Like that one really sucks, but the best way to do it is to have those like reliable people that you know are going to be in your corner. You prepare before, you let them know that like my session depends on somebody volunteering. Like I need volunteers. So you're going to raise your hand and you're going to get the ball rolling. And, you know, those people are there for you. Like, there's so many times that, like, in me and Camilla's past, like, an MC member came up to us and was like, you're going to volunteer, like, right when I speak. And we're going to be like, okay, that's fine. Okay, I can do it. That's perfect. So you need those people for sure. Managing activities, the big one. Mm, yeah, so... You know, you're about to deliver a session and you're like, okay, I have a lot of moving parts. Like my activity requires like 200 people to get up, make human pyramids and then bake 14 cakes. Like what do <laughs> I do? <laughs> I hope your sessions aren't like that, but you know, it'd be exciting. Okay. So first thing, when you have a big crowd, the most important thing you can do is make sure to give super, super clear instructions, you know, let them know exactly what's going on. Tell them, okay sit tight for two minutes. I'm going to give you instructions and then you can split and then you can, you know, follow my instructions. And then also giving them space for any questions before you begin. Right. So being super, super clear, be like, A, B, C, this is what you're going to do. Um, for anyone who was at Falco, an uh, example I have of this was when I did 
a session uh, that required the entire plenary to stand up, make a giant circle, pull out their phones and do karaoke. I think it was the climb we were singing. It was really fun. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I literally, I was like, all right, instruction, super simple. Everyone stand up and make a circle. And I was like, okay, go. And then people were moving really slowly. So I was walking around the room being like, like, you guys know what the instructions are? Like, let's, let's get moving. The second is when you have time constraints. So it's super, super, super important to stay on time, especially you guys are thinking about, you know, facilitating your local conferences or days where there are a lot of sessions uh, or yeah, conferences where there are a lot of sessions in one day. It's super important to stay on time or you can mess up the entire day. If you're not confident in your own abilities to be like checking the time or you think you might forget, it's super easy. Just pick someone to be your time, bitch. It's super, super important. Um, And also another pro tip is to put timers on your slides. So say there's an activity or something, you guys know we do this all the time for conferences as MC. Uh, you put timers on the slides. It's good for both the delegates and for you to also make sure that like you're sticking to the times that you originally said you were going to have. And then third, what if the instructions are super complicated? Like I said, make 20 human pyramids and then bake 14 cakes. Um, it's totally okay to have some volunteers, right? So if you have some, uh, you know, get some of your co-fasties together and use them, you know, have them help you move the crowd around. But the important part with this is making sure that whoever is going to be helping you move the crowd and manage the crowd, it's super important to make sure that they are very, very clear on what the instructions are. There's mm-hmm. nothing There's nothing worse than getting like a group of like five people together and being like, okay, these are these, these, these are the instructions. I need to help you with the session. And then they like tell the people the wrong thing to do because people are asking them questions they don't know. So make sure you guys align, especially when you're having people help you with your session. Truly, truly. The MC, like, will have whole ass dry runs just to prepare telling people the instructions for those spaces. Okay, people, here we are. The fires. It's time to expose. But first, I want to talk about, like, why we even bring this up about firefighting. And that's, like, literally nothing will ever be perfect. I entered this session knowing something's going to fuck up. I know it will. Okay? And that's because nothing will ever be perfect. So you need to be agile you got to be calm and solution oriented to be a facilitator especially with the co you guys got to like have each other's backs i'm pointing to her on my facetime right now um <laughs> and the most important thing is just make a decision and move on it doesn't matter what it was don't think twice like whatever you choose you do it and you move on so we're gonna go through like a few types of fires we like really thought about the most important ones the ones that happen the most often and i'm gonna personally speak about timing fires because I always, always mess these up because I either talk too much or I talk too fast and then it messes up. So first is going over time. So that's like (laughs) basically what you need to do is quickly speed up the session. So think about those time frames that you have where they're going to have five minutes to discuss or 10 minutes for this activity or two minutes for sharing. Those are the first things to go. You cut that time down and that'll help you be able to cut the space. And if it's not enough, we're going to talk about what to do. The next is under time, and this one happens to me the most often. So I'm going to give an example of S&C, my very first conference as an MC member. If any of you were in the last How to Deliver session, oh my god, I've done this twice, um, (laughs) and it was about, like, reviewing your loco agenda and, like, looking at, like, what you can improve for members and, like, being able to deliver. Anyway, that session was supposed to be 45 minutes, and the How to Build a session was on the other side of the hall, and we had to switch after 45 minutes. Well, I got up, I was like, yes, my session is so awesome. I'm going to share all these tips about how to like make it better for members. And then I talked way too fast. I was finished in 10 minutes, guys. This is like not a lie, 10 minutes. And I was like, oh no, what do I do? So literally what I did, I was like, hey guys, like it's been a long day real quick. I just want to give you like a five minute break. Like everybody grab some water, but like, don't leave the room. Don't leave. This is where, yeah, if you need to leave, like you have to be back here in five minutes. They all, like, did their thing, and then I pretended like my projector overheated. I fixed my session and then made a task and activity for the whole, like, group to go over their loco agendas from last year (laughs) and to be able to, like, edit it and, like, make it use the tips I just showed you and, like, add it to it. After that, everybody was like, Angela, that session is so good. I was like, "Uh uh-huh, I really worked hard on it. Like, it was so funny. So, like, just be creative and make that decision. Just do it. It doesn't matter. And then the last is, what if you have no time? Sometimes somebody's going to come in and be like, it's over. Cut it. you got to finish now because we're done. Like, we got to go. That happens sometimes. So basically what it is is finish a session. Don't fight it. Don't try to, like, be like, no, no, like, five more minutes. Just finish it and say, guys, you know, you know what? Let's let's wrap up right now. And then, you know, I know everyone wanted to, like, do more in here, have to, like, work more. But 
talk to me after. I'm going to send the output. It's going to be fine. And that's the end of the session. The main thing to remember is blink, 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 and then finish. And after that, it's totally fine. Next, we got some more fires to talk about. <laughs> Camilla's personal fave. <laughs> Tech fires. Guys, I am the least technologically capable person on my team so that's why tech fires are the scariest ones for me because those are the ones that I'm like I just if they happen I don't know how to fix them so it's yeah it's a big one so first one the projector overheats we have you know some days at conferences we have uh, sessions for 12 hours straight it's gonna happen your projector is gonna overheat it's fine it happens so if you need to take a second to message someone for help that's just the first thing you do but the most important thing is, like, do not panic. Do not stop the session. Do not say, ah, you know, I, like, I really needed my slides, and now I don't have my slides, so the session's done. Like, you have an hour of free time because I can't do it. Don't do that. The show must go on. You do not need your slides. You know what your session was. You made it yourself, and you can deliver it, right? So just take a second, message someone for help, message, if you're at a conference, like an OC member, and say, hey, my projector, like, I need a new projector. Um, I'm going to keep going with my session. Just come and, and do it. Uh, next is the video won't play. It's fine. Skip the slide. You can, you know, explain to them super quickly why this video was important, why you're going to show it, give them the one point, move on. It's fine. And then third goes to say the Wi-Fi is gone, the tech is gone, everything is dead and gone. Again, like Angela said, get creative as hell. Be solution oriented. If you need to give your delegates a five minute break so you can quickly, like, completely redo your session, that's totally fine. But again, remember, the show must go on. We don't give up. We pride ourselves in being super solution-oriented, so that's what we got to do. <laughs> and then the last one is people fires. These always happen. Always. The first one is, like, one person talking too much. Um, I personally like this one because it's always me. Um, they've been sharing for over five minutes. The key is when they take that breath, when they're like, okay, and – you interrupt them and you say, I really vibe with what you're saying and I want to talk more because all they want is to be heard. And you say, I want to talk after, but right now I'm going to move on with the session. Thank you so much for participating. You give everybody, give them snaps, have them sit, thank you, yes, okay, and then they sit down. And then the next is the person who's like ruining the vibe. They're like, I don't like this, like this is stupid, I don't agree with this, like this doesn't make sense. People doing crazy stuff that wasn't the activity. It's totally fine. They're acting like they think the session is stupid. All you got to do is call them out publicly be like, what could be better? Or like, what do you want different? Or like, why do you think it's stupid? Let's talk. Have them go ahead, share their stuff. And then just like the person that talks too much, you say, thank you so much for sharing. That was amazing. Thank you. Please sit down. And then the last is if there's an emergency. So this is like the real fire. Like <laughs> there's like an actual emergency. Number one is safety. So ensure that people are safe. If it's somebody that like passed out or something happened. I've had like crazy things like that happen, like myself busting a knee in front of the crowd. Things happen, okay? And the truth is make sure that they're safe and then if needed, call for help. And after that, once that person is like removed from the space or the, the emergency is gone, you regroup the group and say, this is what's happening. I'm going to give you guys an update at the end, but for now, let's bring it back because this is why we're here and have them finish the session. That easy. So yes, me and Camilla just exposed ourselves a little bit. <laughs> that was a lot. Who has questions? Or comments or anything on all the facilitation stuff we just went through. It was beautiful. Wow, somebody cracked into the pressure. Thank you, Sam. <laughs> oh, yes. Uh -huh. What do you do in case one person is the only one doing the talking? And how do you get more people to engage? I would say this is the one where you have those reliable people. Like, if you know you're going to have a lot of discussion and talking in your session, like, if me and Camilla had planned multiple, like, discussions here, we would have, like, texted people before and been like, hey, this question's going to get asked. Like, could you please share? Um, and that can help you have people, like, prepared for it. You can also, like, do voluntold people and just call on them. I could, like, go in here and look at somebody and say, uh, um, Fernanda, could you please share your comments or concerns or questions about this? You know, like, I could call people out if needed, and that can help get more people to talk. Anything else? Because we got more, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, we always got more. Alrighty. 
So now we're going to put it into practice. So we have a little activity for you guys, you know, because we like continuity. We like things to flow together. So Camilla, could you please tell them about the activity? Of course, absolutely, I can. Um, okay, so like I said yesterday, basically we had, uh, for the activity, was that we had people uh, create session outlines. So we're going to take those today and actually use them and uh, take what we talked about today about, you know, slide design and, you know, facilitation tips, and you guys are actually going to create these sessions. So we're about to send this to you guys. So like I said before, I'm just going to go through the instructions, and then you'll be able to go and do the activity. So step one, you guys will see the outlines here. There are three different topics. Uh, first one is Snapple, second is TikTok, and third is High School Musical. Uh, in the outlines, you'll see like the objective and like, um, yeah, it'll make sense when you see the outline. Uh, so basically what you're gonna do is we're gonna split people up into groups. Uh, then you're gonna make the slide deck for the session. Also, if you, if you click on here, you'll see we have like the slides, uh, like a template ready for you guys. Um, and then one group will present and the rest will get to be our lovely audience. So let's see, um, Angela, should we start, should we split some people up? Um, you want to split people up while I send the links? What? I'll split, you want to split people while I send the links? Yeah, okay, cool. So let me stop sharing my screen. Let's see, how many people do we have? We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, cool. So uh, let's do three people per group. So Angela is sending the, yeah, so she's sending the links right now to the outline, Snapple, TikTok, and High School Musical. Um, so who wants to do Snapple? We need three people. And if you don't, if you guys don't volunteer, then we're just going to put you in groups anyway. Okay, Mateusz wants to be with Gabe. Okay, Do you Mateusz, have a topic that you want to do? Give him Snapple. Mateusz, Gabe, and Samantha, Snapple. Perfect. Head to your slides. <laughs> okay, next we have TikTok. Anyone want to volunteer for TikTok? We need three people for this one. Come on, your favorite topic, people. We know it. Rachel and I are in it. Okay, let's do okay, Rachel <laughs> Lauren. Lauren and uh, Fernanda, because she's Fernanda. clicking, and I know you ladies can type fast. Let's do it. Okay, and then Perfect. Marina, Lauren, and Samantha, you guys can head to High School Musical. Awesome. Okay, so you guys have, um, how long do you think? Should we do, we can give them like, like 10 20. minutes for making it? Because then we're going to present. Yeah, let's do like 12 minutes. Perfect. Okay, perfect. So, so 6.45, we're going to come back together. Uh, and, and basically someone will have the lucky chance to present. So you guys can work on your sessions. Now. So before we begin, do people have any questions? Where's Samantha's where? Okay. Oh, Sam Dowdy, <laughs> could you please go with Gabe and Mateusz? Okay, thank you. <laughs> Other Samantha, could you please go to High School Musical? <laughs> um, perfect. So yeah, guys, make sure you make a session. Maybe like make it for like anywhere between five and ten minutes, and then head to your link and start making that session. We put templates in there already for you, so you can like really get started. All right, good. You have until six forty-five. And me and Camille are going to open the slides to help you all out. I'm just creep on you, honestly, but it's fine. <laughs> Wait, do we, like, oh, the baby. Um, do we, like, split up into, like, different, like, video calls or what? There's also chats on the slides if you need. Like, on, when you open up Google Slides, there's chats. Wait, where are the slides? Do we create them? I sent them in the, in the chat. In the Google Hangouts chat. 